Ever since I've traveled to Japan for the first time to Tokyo and Kyoto, I told myself I have to come back to this country for many more times. This year, I'm coming back to Japan for the second time. I will be visiting Chushu, the southwesternmost part of Japan. I will deep dive into the culture and the story behind each location and share with you guys. This Kyushu series will be split in three parts. In part one, we will be exploring Fukuoka in Kurokawa. Welcome aboard to Curious Nomster. My name is Elaine and I will be your tour guide today. First location we're checking out today is the Fukuoka Tower. Fukuoka Tower is a 234 meter tall tower located in the Momochihama area of Fukuoka, which is a seaside area. Did you know it is also the tallest seaside tower in Japan? You could get a 360 degree panoramic view of the city of Fukuoka, literally the sea and the sky. You can also expect different lighting displays at night on this building throughout the year as well. Check out their website for what's on. Some little tips for you guys. You don't really need to book ahead because the price is actually the same and it's usually not overly busy. You should really try going towards the sunset hours as well. The views were sensational. Once it gets dark, it's probably a good time to leave as well because that's when you see the beautiful lighting displays. Just came down from the uh, Fukuoka Tower. The view is pretty amazing. Uh, we went up around sort of sunset sort of time. Saw the sunset view as well as the dusk as well, which was pretty amazing. We did some time lapse videos as well. That aside, how did we feel about the whole experience? I think if you're after, you know, taking some nice selfies, get a good view of how the whole Fukuoka looks like. I think it's a fairly good experience. So we paid about eight Australian dollars per person. I think in terms of the charge, I think it's okay. It's quite reasonable. So I guess out of five being the highest, I would give it three. Just that, you know, there's always room for uh, improvements. On day two, we checked out the Dazaivu Tenmagu Shrine. Tenmagu shrines are dedicated to the spirit of Sugawara Michizane, a scholar and politician of the Heian period. Because of his great learning, Michizane has been associated with Tenjin, a Shinto deity of education, and is very popular among students. A wide range of amulets can be purchased from the shops around the main hall. The most popular ones are of course education related. The other ones I saw are related to commercial success and exorcism. Other than religious activities, people come here also for the beautiful gardens in different seasons. You will see plum blossoms burst into bloom at the end of winter. Then spring brings clouds of cherry blossoms, wisteria and azalea. You will also see irises in vivid purple color in summer. You must also try out the umegae mochi, which was invented in the Daivu. Umegae mochi translates as plum rice dumpling, but it is actually a mochi filled with wrapping paste. Its outer layer is actually crustier compared to the traditional mochi. This mochi is one of the most popular local foods in Fukuoka prefecture and is rarely available in other parts of Japan. Don't forget to enjoy your mochi with some locally produced matcha as well. Fukuoka produces some of the best green tea in Japan. So we just came out of the, the Zaifu Tanmagu. Interestingly, I didn't realize that the main temple is closed. Some parts of it were open, but the main part was closed. It's in construction until mid-May. I have to say though, overall, it is still quite interesting. There's still quite a lot of nice scenic places to see as well. I vaguely remember what they call the commercial prosperity and good academic result. They charge both the same price as exorcism for some reason. So 
I guess it's a good deal if you're into that sort of thing. Near the Zai Vu, uh, there are actually plenty of umega and mochi as well. Highly recommend you to come here on on a sunny day, not like today. And I would come here for food as well. The local special mochi as well as the soft cream. And check out the matcha as well. That's it guys. Second location we checked out on day two is Yatai, aka Street Food Card. A Yatai is a small mobile food booth. Common foods you can see are gyozas, grilled skewers, Odan, ramen, and many more. The name means shop stand in English. The booth is set up on pedestrian pathways every evening from about 6 p.m. and dismantled late at night or early in the morning. Did you know these mobile food stalls have been around since the Edo period? There are about 100 stalls across Fukuoka. These stalls look small and compact, but it takes at least one hour to set up. You can find your tie mostly around the Nakasu and Tenjin area. Do note that these guys move around a lot, so you may not see these guys at the same location all the time. A little tip for you guys. Do your research about which yatais you want to visit in different areas of Fukuoka. If someone asks you to come into their stall, it's likely not one of the best ones. We have been to our first ever yatai tonight. Uh, we've been to Yamatai Mamichan. Apparently this guy is famous in YouTube and Netflix as well. I actually didn't realize that. We've ordered a couple of uh, Oden items, the daikon, the fish dumplings and some wood ear fish cake as well. We also ordered something called yaki ramen. Like, you know, we've tried yaki soba, we haven't tried yaki ramen before. So that was quite unique. We also ordered the gyoza, gyozas as well as the grilled beef tongue. I think out of everything, my favorite were most definitely the gyozas. Like they were quite small, but I don't know, I just wanted to keep eating them because they were so tiny but so yummy at the same time. I also really loved the, uh, the daikon. The daikon was like super saucy, soupy, juicy, just like I just, I could just keep eating it to be honest. If he left a whole pot of radish daikon in front of me. The shop owner was like super friendly. I forgot to catch his name. And everyone in the shop was like super amazing, like super friendly, you know, helped us to order, uh, place the order, explained to us what everything was. So this shop has been here for 35 years. And the customer that was sitting next to us, he has been hanging out at this yatai for 10 years at least. So I guess my highlights would be most definitely friendliness, yummy food, and nice vibe. And I would most definitely come back again. Highly recommend it, guys. On day three, we checked out Team Lab. Are you ready to experience art like never before? Team Lab is a Japanese art collective that is taking the world by storm with their immersive tag-driven exhibitions. Founded in Tokyo in 2001 by Toshiyuki Inoko, the group consists of people who call themselves ultra-technologists, which are programmers, engineers, artists, CG animators, mathematicians, and architects. So we just came out of the team lab for us interactive experience. It's actually very interesting. Initially, I thought it's gonna be quite gimmicky, like, like you know, sound and wind and 3D projection stuff, but I feel like it's way more than that. Like, I try not to spoil it for you because I really want you to experience it, but basically they have uneven grounds for, I suppose, the the art to be projected on. So it sort of creates a multi-dimensional environment. I sort of feel like it's more than 3D for some reason. I feel like it's beyond 3D in, in my point of view. So uh, it requires a lot of coordination as well, but it's quite fun, I think. And I actually see a lot of people coming with their families as well. So. What more could you ask for, you know? You feel fun and your kids 
also feel the fun as well. So I would highly recommend this place. In terms of booking the tickets, I think you can either book it online or you know just come in person and uh, line up if you like. Uh, we came on a Friday afternoon. It wasn't a public holiday here. They basically use English for the online booking system as well, so it wasn't too hard. Another tip in terms of how much time you, sh you should spare for this team lab activity, I would say maybe at least spare, you know, two hours. And if you come as a family, yeah, two to three hours, you can actually re-enter the, uh, the forest as many times as you like as well so which could add on to more time to your um, you know to your activity at team lab so out of five five being the highest i would say i give this place four it's not easy for me to give out four so four is pretty good before you leave Fukuoka on day three you must check out this restaurant one of the local specialties here in Fukuoka is mantaiko a reddish, sausage looking thing made from cured sacks of pollock roe. This stuff is available all over Japan, but it's a particularly big deal in Fukuoka. The most popular place to sample this delicacy is a restaurant called Ganzo Hakata Mentaiju. Most tries in this restaurant are the rice dish with mentaiju and sukemen dish. Mentaiju is a piece of kondu wrapped mentaiko served over white rice topped with nori. Sukemen is essentially dipping ramen. The dipping sauce is a rich soup made with mentaiko, bonito broth and veggies. This restaurant all started with a local chef in Hakata wanting to create a dish that combined the flavors of the sea with the comfort of rice. A very important tip for you guys. This place is usually busy with long queues. I strongly recommend you to make a booking if you're keen. So we've practically just experienced our first ever uh, mentaiko. So what mentaiko is basically a sack of egg roast. It's actually mostly um, saltiness and it's quite seafoody but not overwhelmingly seafoody. So we've ordered the um, sukemen and the mentaiko rice set. Highlights, extremely um, friendly service, quality food for sure, and excellent ambience. On day four, we drove from Fukuoka to Kurokawa Onsen Town, which took us about two and a half hours. A hidden gem nestled in the picturesque Aso area of Japan. Surrounded by lush green mountains and serene rivers, this town offers an escape from the hustle and bustle of the city. Kurokawa Onsen Town is a place that truly immerses you in nature's tranquility. Another captivating fact about this town is the therapeutic properties of the water in the onsens. Apparently, the mineral-rich hot springs have healing benefits, such as relieving muscle ache and improving blood circulation. Here in Kurokawa Onsen Town, you can choose from a range of hot springs, each offering a different bathing experience. Some onsens are nestled among lush greenery, giving you a sense of zen. Others are tucked away inside traditional ryokans where you can relax in the serenity of your own private hot spring. We were so thrilled to be able to book a ryokan at Kiyashiki where we have our own private onsen. The reason why we picked Kiyashiki is that it has modern facilities with traditional design, which my architect husband Steve highly approved of. A lot of the older ryokans in town only have rooms with shared toilets, bathrooms and onsens, whereas some of the more modern ones have these amenities in your own room, and Kiyashiki is one of them. Now, let's take a look inside of our ryokan. Welcome to my home in Kurokawa. We've booked this room that has two bathrooms and one bedroom. Have a look guys, this is so 
classic looking Japanese ryokan. Check out that Japanese light. Ta da! A Japanese toilet. Possibly heated. Ta da! This is um, one of the baths we have in this onsen room. This is where we hang. Probably gonna have breakfast, or tea, or coffee around here. Welcome to the kitchen. We've got this bamboo forest as a view. Ta-da! Another bathroom. I really like the design of this place. A lot of this paper material on the slide door. This is where we wash our face and our bedroom. And last but not least, Remember I said there are two baths? Ta ta! Seriously, if this is not the best view, I don't know what is. This open bath is right next to a bamboo forest. According to the onsen staff, the temperature of the onsen is about 85 degrees, so probably shouldn't stay there for more than a couple of minutes. So what rating would I give this onsen, as well as this ryokan? Easy. Easy five. Unfortunately, I lost my live audio, so I have to do a voiceover for my thoughts and tips. We really enjoyed the walk around the Kurokawa onsen town. Needless to say, the views are breathtaking. There are also a lot of boutique looking ryokans, interesting looking shops, eateries and a few temples dotted around town. We thoroughly enjoyed our stay at Kiyashiki. We got to explore different types of private onsen with different views and the service and dining experience was unparalleled. A couple of tips for you guys. Try to book as early in advance as possible. We booked about 3 months before we flew and hack. Most ryokans were fully booked. Second tip, allow extra time to drive from Fukuoka to Kurokawa because the roads are super duper windy. Clearly I was so prepared, I also lost the live audio of this part. But here is my thought about Fukuoka and Kurokawa. I'm really surprised by what I learned about the two first cities I visited in Kyushu and totally loved what I experienced. Fukuoka is such a foodie city. The vibe in these two cities are very chill compared to the hustle and bustle in Tokyo. Don't get me wrong, there are still things I am unsure about. Like the beef offal hot pot I actually chicken out from. And shopping wasn't particularly easy for me, as I think I'm slightly bigger than the average Japanese female. But this is not the end. Next stop, we are going to Kumamoto. Are we going to eat any horse meat? Are we gonna bump into any grizzly black bears? Stay tuned for part 2 of the Kyushu series to find out! Sayonara!